Hi guys, today I'm going to do a haul from Hobby Lobby and I bought a lot of stuff. The reason why I bought a lot of stuff is because this will be part of a, I guess, Christmas present that I'll be making for someone. So that's why there's so much stuff here is it takes a lot of products to do this one project. <laughs> um, I have a... Hobby Lobby Wood Obsession. That's, they've got a big selection of different types of things to do on wood and it's, it's intimidating when I go in there because I want all of it. So I try to pick out my selection for what I'm going to be doing as far as projects or whatever I have in mind of starting a type of project for. And then I try to get out of there because if I don't, if I don't leave it at that, I will pick and choose through everything. And they've got two full aisles on wood. So it's, well, actually three if you count the um, canvas type wood stuff. This is a 11 by 14 wood palette for painting and stuff. And I'm not actually going to be using this side. I'm actually going to be using this side because what I'm going to make will sit inside here. So that's one of the projects that I'm going to be doing. It's a polymer clay tile mosaic thing. So that's a little, it's intimidating because I haven't done any mosaics with polymer clay. I've done them with um, glass. I've done them with actual tile. I've done them with paper. I've done all that in college. So this is a little, a, well, a lot different. Not just a little. It's a lot different. But I bought this, and this was, does it even say how much it was on there? It's $9.99, so it's not too bad. Um, I did have the 40% off coupon. I think this is actually on sale, not for certain about that. I try to hit the products that are on sale because Hobby Lobby is expensive. Most craft stores are expensive. And I know that if I'm going to go and buy a block of Sculpey Clay, I'm probably going to go and buy it at Walmart as long as I need white or black because at Hobby Lobby, they're like 10 bucks or nine or ten bucks and I can buy it for five or six dollars at Walmart and it's not the bake shop type it's actually Sculpey so that's where I bought that. I also bought some polymer clay of course I bought it's gonna be a purple and yellow theme this is uh, if I can read this I need to get my glasses changed um, <clears throat> this is called turnip and it's it shows more red on camera but it's definitely got a deep purple and the yellow one is acid yellow it's actually brighter than what it's showing on camera sorry about the lighting I'm just sitting in my room going through this stuff trying to figure out how I'm gonna lay all these out this is a lemonade it's a lot yellower <laughs> than what it's showing on it looks like lemonade you know and of course you know glow in the dark because I might do some parts um, glow in the dark in the mosaic to change it up a bit <clears throat> this is sunshine and it still looks very white I mean that's it's bright yellow so <laughs> strange um, this is fuchsia pearl and this has a little bit of a pearl sheen to it. Let me see if I can actually get it to... I don't know if you can tell, but there, it's a deeper purple than what it shows on camera. I bought 12 blocks of different colors. Because I'm not really sure what type of purples I'm going to go through. Or if I'm going to go through these purples, how much yellow I'm going to play into the mosaic. But... I bought a wide range so that I would have a good choice. I have some purples, but purple isn't really a color that I pick out 
to do stuff in. I pick out more like natural type stuff, except for the kit I bought, which was, um, I want to say that was Primo, but it was, not really sure if this Primo is this brand. Um, very tougher. It, this is a, a tough polymer clay. If you're going to do some type of jewelry and if it's going to have any thin pieces or anything like that, or if you just need it to really hold up, Primo is your way to go. But this hurts my hands. I need to go, th you know, more towards like Sculpey 3 because it's easier on my hands, on my arthritis. I can, I, I don't get to hurting as quick and it's, it's not killing my hands. And this one is Spring Lilac. It's a little deeper, but not much. I mean, that's sort of the color. And then this one is, again, the Purple Pearl. I bought two Purple Pearls because um, well, this one was Fuchsia Pearl, so not really. It, they're very close in color. Wow, it looks totally different on the camera. Maybe it's just my lighting in here. This one seems to be more of a brighter pearl. I mean, purple. Purple pearl on that one. And then I bought a silver because, you know, everybody needs a silver. And I bought it in Primo because I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with this. This one, I, I like this color. This is just purple. And it's, that's about what it looks like. That, that color is tr damn near true. Maybe a little bit more bluer than what the camera shows, but not much. And then the last two is, of course, I think this one was, yeah, 18 karat gold. Because I like this gold color better than I liked the regular gold color. And this one is Gentle Plum. So, I mean, they had a wide range of purples to choose from. And I didn't realize until I started pulling out, you know, all the different ranges. And, you know, whenever this is sitting beside a pink block, it looks pink. But when I picked it up and put it in my hand, held it for a little bit, and I went back and I looked at it next to all the other purples, I was like, you know, that's kind of in the same range. So, I want to take it just in case. And I bought some beads. And these are just crystal clear ones. These are um, glass beads. These were $2.99 a piece. The polymer clay were like $2.49, $2.37, some of them. Um, I don't, there was this one right here, $2.69. I don't know why that one's more. I guess because of color demand or something. Not really sure. Um, souffle. Now this one's really soft. You don't want to make anything that's going to be thin in this stuff because it's going to break pretty easily. Sulfy, I mean souffle is sulfy. That's kind of like a blend of sculpey and souffle, huh? Um, they are really, they're really good on my hands on the souffle. Okay, so just the crystal beads and then I bought these little ones. They look very pink, but they're more purple. Um, that's just this by, um, by a bead treasure just the check glass beads and these the this is actually purple glass well purple colored glass but then the inside of it is actually pink so it's kind of like a play on colors there it's very interesting. I, I couldn't pass it up. And this is just the regular seed beads. What color is that? That's purple. Just regular purple. Yeah, what does this one say? <laughs> purple. <laughs> I mean, they, they don't really have a whole lot of names on here. Metallic purple, that one. That, that is definitely a metallic purple. And these are just crystal. That's what they call those. 
Okay, and then I bought some ice resin. I've heard good things and bad things about this ice resin. I'm, I want to make out, I want to make up my mind my, for myself. I want to try it and see how I like it. I do have the Lisa resin, but I don't have the UV lamp yet. I did order one. Hasn't gotten here yet. It's been about two weeks. Whatever. I bought some paint. This is the Deco Art Elegant Finished Metallic Paint in Gl um, Glorious Gold. And I'll be using this in the um, mosaic. I also bought these. I, I actually lost the panel thing that was on here. As you can tell, this this packaging has been through hell. But it was the last package that they had. And these are the Lumiere paints, and they have different colors all through there. I'll open them up and tell you a few of the colors and why I bought them. Um, the reason why I bought them is because uh, I was watching some videos. It's kind of sticky. I wonder why. Um, some videos, some tutorials on these paints. And the Halo ones actually... When they when they're mixed, they can form beautiful halo type colors, you know, through throughout the piece that you're working on. And I want to do a little bit of those. This is pewter, and this one is metallic olive green. I love that color. Look at that. Mm. This one is pearlescent turquoise. Gorgeous color. This one is metallic bronze. Very nice. This one's just pearl white. And it just looks white. Well, you can kind of see the pearl in there. Not much, but it does definitely have pearl, you know, reflective in there. Metallic gold. And this is the Halo Violet Gold. So, whenever you see this, let's see if I can get it to kind of show. There's no real... Whenever you see this, you can see how it shifts from... It has a color shift. Changes from purple to like gold. And that can be really awesome to work with. Lots of things to doing there. This is um, Halo Pink Gold and I can't really tell. Just shake it up a little bit. I'm sure these have been set in a while because this package is it's been through some shit. But that was the last one they had so and I didn't want to buy them online because I mean online these were twelve ninety nine for the little set of all the little, I call these samples, of all the sample pieces. And that's great and everything, um, but I don't want to spend a lot of money on something that I don't find is useful, you know, to me. So I definitely wanted to buy them from Hobby Lobby. And at first um, I didn't find them and I just so happened to find them where did I find them at? I think it was in the I think it was in the clay section. And I think it was more up towards on the wall on the top part. That's why I don't see it. It's because I'm five foot two and I don't see nothing if it's past five foot five. So I've got these circle metal cutters. I needed some of these. Um, I didn't want to get these because I'm just going to open them and show you. But I decided that I can deal with it as I go along. I wanted to get the plastic ones because whenever it's metal like this, you can see this seam right here. And that's going to show up in your polymer clay when you cut it. So each time that you cut one, 
you have to fix it because it'll it'll leave a little lip just a little lip like that you know where it cuts and but you know I mean for what I'm using it for I'm going to be manipulating the clay quite a bit there was one in here that was really bad and I was like well it's the best one out a lot so might as well try it this one right here it's got a definite you can see right there that will leave that will leave a mark in your clay when you're using it but it is what it is and I can work around it um, I have a lot or I did have a lot of cutters from art school or art during high school college art and then just buying stuff for like cookie cutters and stuff for Jacob when he was younger but all my little circle ones I had different size circles all the way down to very small to really big and I don't know where they went I guess somewhere in between all my moves they got lost or maybe my mom got a hoe to them and threw them in the garage cell or something because she she's had a couple of garage cells that you know I'd walk out there and I'm going what is this 1977 ashtray doing out here you know <laughs> you know that was handmade mom and I keep stuff like that uh, she didn't see no need in it I'm not gonna be able to get this one open quietly with all these staples in it and then I got just a bunch of um, little teardrop ones so that I can do stuff with those those that come in handy with making like leaves or teardrop shapes so I I you know I'm still not done so I bought this little wood piece that says family I'm not for sure but I think that I'm going to use this in the mosaic piece I'll have to see where it goes I haven't planned it all out yet I've planned what I'm going to use as far as materials. I've planned what colors I need to use. And I planned the, the theme. So that's really all I've got going on right now. I bought these on sale because they were just on sale. And it says $1.50. And it's just a little stamp that says Happy Father's Day. And then I got another one that says Happy Mother's Day and it's just a little rubber stamp <clears throat> and because I'm tired of using sealants or glosses or something to use on my polymer clay and not knowing if it's going to leave it sticky or not like like the de um, decoupage no what is that called? I don't remember. It's not sitting down here. I did have it down here because I was reading it. Um, anyway, one of the things that I used on there, it was like a, uh, uh, it left it very tacky. And I had made the piece for a friend, and I had made it for Christmas. I think it was for Christmas I made it for. And I didn't get to give it to her until like towards her birthday or something. Either it was for her birthday and I didn't get to give it to her till Christmas or it was for Christmas and I didn't get to give it to her, something like that. Um, it left it sticky and I was like, okay, so I'll just hang it up and let it sit a while and I'll check it in three days or something. A month later, it's still tacky and I couldn't couldn't understand it because I thought you know I thought this was something that I that I read that was approved for covering or sealing polymer clay and it didn't um, react or just not make it set at all and I got to reading and then 
come find out it was one type of that product works, the other one doesn't. The other one takes much longer to actually um, completely uh, quit being sticky. And I, it, it took like six months. And that's crazy. So I bought, what did it smell like? Said one, yeah, it does kind of smell like gasoline or something. This is Gloss Glaze, and it was $7. So that's, I mean, that's not bad. It's a very small jar, as you can see. Don't know how I'm feeling about that yet. Depends on how long it lasts. Someone who does very thin layers over a lot of her pieces, and she probably makes um, around, for a week, I would say around 20 charms or something. And it's consistent, and she, she says this takes her a couple of months to go through. And she just does a thin layer and lets it dry, and then it's, it's good after a few days. So after a few days, it, she says it's completely set. There's nothing to, to wait on. And I see here it says, stir gently and thoroughly. <laughs> Do not shake. And it says to apply glaze to baked clay with brush. Let dry 30 minutes between coats. Fully dry after 24 hours. Easy cleanup with soap and water and keep from freezing. Well, it's not going to freeze here in um, Texas, that's for sure. So I'm very excited to use this. I have a lot of stuff that I'm going to need to seal that's coming up. And then I bought a Perfect Pearl or Pearl X, Pearl X pigment powder. And this is just in purple or reflected, reflects violet. I always check my tops when I go in there because I have bought a bottle of this stuff and they're very light. So and if you're just grabbing stuff off the shelf to hurry and get out of there like I was, I grabbed one that was evidently opened and over half of the bottle was gone. And as you can see, see if I can do this without spilling it out. As you can see, it's like half of the bottle's already gone. It's because it's from settling and stuff. But when I got this home, the one that had been opened, it was not even a fourth of the jar. I mean, it was like down to here. Somebody had opened it up and poured it out, and whoever came along and seen the mess, if they had a mess, maybe the person poured it in a container and took it home. I'm not really sure, but this bottle, well, not this one, but the one that I had purchased was not checked, and nobody at a store is going to be like, are you sure you didn't use that? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so. Um, and here's a... I had to buy another one of these. Because mine's... Um, mine's uh, getting a little messed up. So, this is... A no-slip silicone... Uh, piece to work on with polymer clay. And... It's just like this. Word to the wise. If you're going to work on this and then bake on it or whatever you're going to do, the first thing you need to do is peel this little blue thing off. Nobody told me that on my first one. So I thought, you know, that's kind of strange. And it doesn't say on here remove backing or anything like that. And I was like, well, maybe that's just part of it or something. I don't know. It was slipping when I was working on it, but I was like, whatever. But that that's this it's not really sticky, but it's definitely got a grip to it to where it won't slide around. And that's what this um, I can go ahead and peel it off this. But this this right here protects that. And yeah, I'm gonna be working on this so I can just roll it up and use this. But when you pop that in the oven and uh, it's got that blue thing on there, it tends to melt this. 
So mine's got a big ring that's melted on it. So, pull it off and throw it away. Don't do what I did. And I got some texture sheets. These are very thin texture sheets. There's, I don't even know what's in here. It's Macon's. Is that how you say that? Yeah, Macon's. It's just cheap ones, you know. $4.99, that's not bad. But it's texture sheets. And the good thing about these, I have some of these already. Um, I don't have these texture styles though but the good thing about these is these are thin enough that you can actually put your clay on here and then roll it through the pasta machine to get that texture and to make sure there's no air bubbles in there and stuff it, it's very very thin but it, it's nice when you can just do that so we've got looks like this is a wood grain. Let's see, how can we show this? Let's try this. Can you see it on there a little better? A little bit. That's a wood grain. This one looks like shells. Almost like fish scales, you know? Not shells. Um, fish scales. And this is stars. I didn't have the stars. That's the fish scales and stars is the whole reason why I bought that. I haven't used a texture sheet on making bark yet or wood grain. So it's going to be very interesting. And this one's snowflake. I don't really use a whole lot of snowflake print stuff. So see how that works out. And... Those are going to be interesting to work with. Excited about that. The other ones that I have are very easy to work with. And there's not a whole lot of sticking as far as the clay to the, to the actual texture sheet. Some texture sheets that you get that are either silicone or um, uh, clay, or not clay, rubber like this type of rubber stuff. Those kind of texture sheets, I've, I've found that you have to get a water barrier or you can use um, cornstarch. I don't like using cornstarch. Um, you have to kind of spray your texture sheet with it to be able to pull the polymer clay off and not have just a horrible mess. Um, some of the silicone kind you can actually put it down and then roll the roll the texture sheet very tightly like this away from the clay to be able to pull out all of the silicone texture sheet without pulling the clay with it because you'll lose certain details especially if they're deep so I I like these plastic ones you can just run it through the pasta machine pull it off and you're going also bought some wood, $1.99, just little wood. Also try to check and make sure they are flat. Um, I try to keep them away from heat. One that doesn't have too many dents. This one has a few dents, like right here. But I'll be able to sand that out. I normally just sand the living shit out of them. Uh, this one right here. This one was $2.99. They have a good good price on their wood, you know, and it's good wood. You know, nice and flat. It's not bowed or anything. Um, some of them have, let's see, like some of the bark in here is a little deep. It's got deep ridges in it. I'll have to sand that out. But for the most part, they are the ones, Hobby Lobby is the ones that I've been able to find pieces of wood at that are good burning wood without having a high price on them they're they're pretty good I have bought some from Walmart before I bought my stepmom's box that I wood burned the little bird and Celtic knot on and her name on and finished the inside with um, 
a like crushed velvet material. I did buy that one from Walmart and that was not actually good to burn on. It was very inconsistent with taking the heat and some of the burns I had to go really really slow and make sure that it was burning consistently because as you burned a line there was so much inconsistence with the with the burn that it, it looked horrible for a while so I had to really work on that one I also bought two cake decorating tips and the whole reason why I needed these cake decorating tips <laughs> is because of these little tiny circles I needed two different sizes and sure I could have found something around the house that was small like that but chances of finding those exact sizes wasn't going to happen so I figured that just buy them and get it over with. They were a couple bucks each. And I also bought some glass beads. And these are, of course, in the purple scheme. Some of them blue-green, you know, but I liked these purple colors. And here, these are just from Bead Treasures again. And this whole thing was $15.99. So, there's lots of nice colors in here. So you've got like a different colored greens and stuff in here. Let me see if I can hold these up. And see, it's different greens and blues and a little bit of purple in there. And then these are, I just love these, especially since they're square. It's beautiful green. And these are a kind of a green color, green blue, I guess. These are, I guess, a deep teal very nice seed beads. Um, these are blue and green. Looks like maybe some clear in here. I can't really tell. Maybe, yeah. Maybe some purple. Um, here's some blue. Very nice blue. Some purple. Here's bigger ones. So it's all different sizes. Purple, green, and, and uh, blues are all in here. Um, different sizes and stuff so that's that's the key element I needed for these was having oh I like that like a royal blue that's probably my probably one of my favorite colors and then here's just a blue square I wish they had a purple one in here of this type the square beads that would have been pretty cool <clears throat> let's see So the seed beads and different types of beads <coughs> is going to play a part in the mosaic also. Um, the reason why I bought this set like this instead of buying all the different ones, oh, I also bought this little jar, but I'm, this is probably going to be a polymer clay thing, so. But the reason why I bought those beads in the jar is because I have lots of beads and some of my containers are getting broken because they're old so I bought those and those and those beads in the containers and then I bought some individual stuff here too because now this is a madhouse I'm just going to show you I won't show you the worst one first we'll just save that one for a second this is some of my beads and, and other stuff is in here too. It's not just my beads and this is all I have. This is lots of stuff. It's got beads, it's got seed beads, it's got wire, it's got drawing chalk. <laughs> uh, I have no clue what this is. Let's find out together. Oh, corner pieces. Yeah for you know wood but I just have my some of my beads just like this ones that I was working on you know little 
wooden birdhouses, you know, and stuff like that. I got wooden beads, lots of wooden beads. Um, I don't know why. I There for a while I had a lot of little wood pieces I was working with. And this is just random, random ones that I had. Random sizes and stuff. I didn't like working with those much. That's why I have so many of them. I just stuck them in there and said, you know, if I ever run across a pot project that might need it, there it is. I might use a piece or two in the mosaic. That's one way to use it up. And this container is so hard to close. I'm, I'm not really thrilled about this container. But this other one that is almost empty now, it's got a few things on it. Um, I've got some different seed beads here. This is stuff I already had. So some seed beads there. And these are the containers I had, and I hate them. I absolutely hate these containers. Number one, inside of this threading here, there's a gap. You see that little gap right there? So these hooking up to one another is questionable. And sometimes they come apart. Sometimes this plastic completely cracks and then your beads are everywhere. That's why I hate these. I don't like them, not even a little bit. And this is where I keep most of my jewelry making components. And these are little earring, earring hooks. And both uh, silver and just different components. And then I've got the large pens that I don't really use a whole lot. This is some extra long ones that I had. Um, then I got my tweezers for dealing with tiny things that my fingers don't like to pick up. And then I bought these a while back. And the whole reason why I haven't even used these is I really don't know how they're going to work. So I'm kind of afraid to put them on a piece. But these are small round ear wires. And they are definitely just round. Let's see if I can get one singled out. They are definitely just round. And, and the reason why I'm afraid to use them is because I'm afraid they're actually going to come out of someone's ears fairly easy because it's just a hoop and that's it and that's where you that little eyelet right there is where you would hang your earring component part so I don't know how that's going to work out I'm just afraid it's just going to roll and fall out you know after movement and stuff. I don't mean like somebody's got such loose ears that they're just going to fall out from two seconds of putting them on. I used to keep all of my beads. This is this also came with that set that break a lot easier than the other por um, containers. And these have broke. I had a huge box of these and I thought, wow, I'll never have to buy any containers. And I haven't since I was in my 20s. So these these containers here are about, I want to say they're at least, this is Jacob's 18. No, Jacob's 21. So I would say these are probably about 15, if not more, years old. And... I mean, they, they serve their purpose and everything, but, <coughs> you know, their time's running out. I have lots of components in here that I use. I put them in Ziploc baggies for that very reason right there um, because, you know, this container is very iffy. I got lots of different, you know, stuff through here. I've got little toggle components for bracelets and you know, I have little rings, jump rings and stuff. Um, 
just lots of things in here. I forgot I even had some of this stuff. Some of the stuff I, I don't use because I didn't like it when I used it. It's more toggles and, and um, uh, silver. And just for making one pair of earrings for a girl, I mean, one pair, just one pair that she wanted. I made the girl the earrings and then I think she paid me like 20 bucks for them or something. Maybe it's 25. And it took more than that to buy all the components. But I thought, oh, I'll just use them up. And this has been at least 10 years ago. And I still have the components here. It's things that I really don't use very often. It's not really a style that people are into anymore. I mean, maybe I'll do a project. Maybe somebody will find it interesting and do a little project on making some earrings with that stuff. At least use them for someone else's benefit to be able to make something that they enjoy. Yeah, all this stuff is falling out. I hate these containers. I hate them. So, in this bag, I have lots of stuff. This was everything that I carried all of my components and stuff in. I even resorted to using empty pill bottles because they were more secure than what those other ones were. And here's some more beads, you know, that in that same kind. And I have some of my files and stuff in here because, you know, sometimes you need a file down. <coughs> the corner of something. I have lots of seed beads. Lots of them. I mean, just lots of them. I need to find a different way to store them. Oh, there's a split rings. <laughs> split rings. If you don't know what a split ring is, it's on the line of what a keychain ring is. And... Some people actually use them in um, doing chain mail and stuff. How they would do, I don't know, it'd drive me nuts. But I thought it would be cool to do a chain in it to see how well it worked, to see if it was actually something that I would want to start adding components to into my jewelry making. And they are the devil. Basically, what it is, let me see if I can pull these apart. These are very, very tight, so that you can kind of see. No, there's no way I can. Okay, hopefully. It's actually, work with my camera. Try to be good about this. You're not going to be able to see it. So, basically what it is, it's one wire that's wrapped three, well, one, two, and then three. And then whenever it's cut, you've got two outer rings like this, and you have an inner ring that runs in between. So it's wrapped three times around the component that it's on before it's cut. And get it, it's not something that you just bend and twist and put them together. I have a friend that's texting me. Um, one of my friends is in New York right now, and she's sending me all sorts of pictures, making me jealous. And But these, I hate them. You cannot get them open very well, and especially to work with them. If you're doing just one or two, you might be able to use these. If you're doing a whole chain of things, you're going to drive yourself nuts, and you're it's... It's not, it's not something you want to do, or at least nothing you'll come out saying on the other end of. So, I have all those split jump rings for nothing. Thank God they were not very expensive. I know why it's not expensive, because they are the devil. And if you're into thinking about getting any kind of 
jewelry making tools. The one thing you want to get definitely is box hinge type um, tools that because the scissor type the one that's like this I'm not gonna say they don't last long they tend to when your points are like this they have a, ten, a tendency of working like this and when you're trying to put leverage on something they will actually pop and I don't like scissor type hinges. Let me see if I actually have a pair of the box hinge that I do have. That I do like. No, I do not. But I have a big ass honking scissor. I mean, I have pliers up here because I got tired of them snapping on me. I don't have my my box hinge. Anyway, you want to look for a box hinge. Uh, type thing. If it's got a a circle, you can't see it. <laughs> a circle like this. It's it's scissor type hinges. Those tend to not last long, and they tend to let you down when you need them for leverage. So if you're doing any kind of leverage, stay away from those. Just buy the box hinge. You'll, you'll be very, very happy with, with the choice. I have lots of wire in here. I'm not going to go into detail. Lots of cord. And I, the whole reason why I bought, bought some of the containers for the beads, these little ones, is to put all my small, smaller components in. And to get away from these little devil manias right here because that's not cool and are these spin no these are little figure eights okay <clears throat> lots of things in here lots of stuff you know just lots of beads so I want to get something and I haven't quite found what I am looking for yet to sort out all of my beadwork mess. I've thought about buying a tackle box. I've thought about buying a toolbox and then just throwing all the jars in there. Not really sure yet because I have quite a few. This is just a little bit. I've got more and it's a mess. I need to find something besides the bag and two containers and then other little containers like these all sitting around on my craft table so <clears throat> if anybody has any ideas or anything message me and let me know what what you recommend for storing beads and so I can get some ideas before I tackle that mess I totally missed the trash can and I don't care right now anyway I'll see you guys later on just wanted to do a little haul of what I bought and <coughs> hopefully I can start that project. I have been away for, well, I don't want to say away. I have not been at home for five days. I came here one time to pick up something and then leave immediately. I've been somewhere else and I've uh, kind of not been available here lately so I haven't been able to make any videos been very busy with work some days I've even worked 12 hours so and that's been very exhausting but what I was doing away from home was even more exhausting <laughs> and so anyway I will talk to you guys later on I will make some more videos coming up for this tile mosaic piece and hopefully I'm really nervous about making it I really am like I said I've worked with other materials but I'm not that experienced with polymer clay the only ones you've seen and I've worked with it a little bit before 
I started making videos and then a little bit in the middle trying to see how can you manipulate the clay it's not like it's nothing like working with any type of ceramics or clay pots or anything like that 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 clay is a completely different animal it manipulates totally different than polymer clay I mean if I'm having a problem with you know pottery you add water and smooth it out and add a little more material that's not what you do with polymer clay that is not how it works that so it's it's definitely been an experience trying to learn how to um, get to the area of what I'm working on so get to the area of where I actually like it some of the stuff I don't even like at all but and I, I'm kind of assuming that as I'm learning more of how to um, sculpt with it, any kid can do what I'm doing right now. So it's like kid type material or tutorials. But this mosaic piece is going to be—it's going to have to be planned out. It, it's color scheme, texture scheme, everything. It's—it's it's a huge project, and I'm really excited to get it started. But I can't start it this week it will probably be this weekend so I'll talk to you guys later on <clears throat> hopefully everybody's doing good out there I'm gonna clean up my big mess I created here because I know I made a mess and get some of this stuff sorted out talk to you guys later bye